When we learn flamenco, very often we hear our teachers or the singers say, listen to la caída del cante, escucha la caída del cante, as if it was something obvious, but it's not. So let's see what it is exactly, how it works, how can we identify it and anticipate it. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you sing flamenco, you dance, you play guitar, you play cajon, you play palmas, or you just love it and you want to understand how it works, let's talk today about the caída del cante. We must know exactly what the caída del cante is because it is the key point where to interact all together, the singer, the guitarist and the dancer, and the palmeros and the percussionist and whoever is on stage. When somebody tells us just listen to the caída, it sounds like easy, right? But it's not. To identify, to hear the caída del cante, we need to understand what it is, know where to look for it, and listen to a lot of cante. And when I say listen to a lot of cante, I mean active listening. Active listening means paying attention to what you are listening to, even if you want with a pen and paper and analyze it, try to understand how it works and then feel it. It's not like listening to music while cooking or driving or taking your shower. The caída is the moment where the cante concludes melodically. It happens that logically when it concludes melodically, it also concludes rhythmically and harmonically. Let's take a very simple example with happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. At the end of this verse, we feel that it is the end. We don't need anything else after that. We could start another verse or finish the song here. This is the main caída of this happy birthday letra. In a flamenco context, the main caída del cante is the end of one of the legos I always talk about, right? Like a letra lego, or a coletilla, or an estribillo, or um, la salida del cante. It is the end of the block. Let's take a very clear, very simple example of a coletilla by La Niña de los Peines that I love, Calabacita Calabazón. Ay, calabacita, ay, calabazón, que siente bichito lo yo. It is very clear melodically, rhythmically, and harmonically, right? But in a block, in a Lego, we can also distinguish the different caídas of the different lines. Like in Happy Birthday to You, we have four different lines. Happy Birthday to You, with a caída. Happy Birthday to You, a second caída. Happy Birthday to You, a third caída. Happy Birthday to You, and the main caída. Same thing with Calabacita Calabazón. Ay, calabacita, ay, calabazón, que in this example, it's very clear, right? Because this coletilla is built on the Andalusian cadence, which is the backbone of so many things in flamenco. There are videos on this topic. And there is no processing, like no respiro, no repetition, nothing. It's just straight. With this coletilla, only by listening and with a little of intuition, we could understand what's happening and anticipate the caída. But depending on the palos and the styles, we can reach incredible levels of complexity, where listening and intuition won't be enough at all. And if the main caída, the end of the letra, can be anticipated even without knowing the styles, it is much more difficult with the internal caídas. Let's see together another example of what can happen with a cante de Juan Cantero por tangos extremeños. This example is not very complicated either because it follows the Andalusian cadence again, but we can already see that many little things are happening already. 
there is a processing of the letra. It means if we compare the written letra and the sung letra, they are different. There is a repetition of the first line. There is a respiro. And then we have this kind of extra line at the end of the letra. The first caída of the first tercio is very easy. But for the caída of the second tercio, we need to know how to wait because the melody is suspended for a longer time before its conclusion. Sometimes we think that the caída is coming, but no, the cante is going directly from a tercio to the next, without clear caída linking the tercio, as it happens here between the third and the fourth tercio. And sometimes there are small traps, like here, the fourth tercio could perfectly be the end of the letra, because there is the caída rhythmically, melodically, and harmonically, we reach the first step of the cadence, it could be finished here. But no, there is an extra tercio with this mira mira viva, which is part of the style. Mira, 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 mira. main rule of the game. Each element of the cante, the salida del cante, the letras, the coletillas, the estribillo, have their own main caída and the internal caídas. And if we want to really play the guitar accompanying the singer and dance to the cante, we need to highlight these caídas. Not only the last one, the main one, the end of the letra, but the internal small caídas too. This is the main rule of the game, of the improvisation. Remember, this is a conversation, and very often the interactions and improvisation take place in reaction to the cante. As I said before, the caídas are melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic at the same time. So they are meeting points between the cante, the guitar, and the baile, and the palmeros, and the percussionist, and whoever is on stage. So if we miss them, we miss the whole point, we miss the main goal of the game. In order to participate in this game, we have to understand what's going on and be able to anticipate. It's just like driving a car, you must be able to anticipate anything, otherwise the contestation is a reaction, you respond to a specific caída of a specific tercio within a letra. The remate, along with the caída del cante, what we call sometimes remate de cante, is when the dancer is able to anticipate and conclude the remate at the same time with the cante. And this is beautiful. And if you choose to rematar after the cante, it's also perfectly fine. It's a perfectly valid option, but it should be your choice. Not that you are waiting for the end of the cante because you don't know where the caída is. If we just listen while waiting to see or to hear what happens, it won't work. Because we won't have time to react, to prepare something that really goes with the cante, something a bit more elaborate, something classy and because we'll always be waiting for the end of the letra and lose this dimension of playing and communicating with the singer. The fact that the singer understands that you understand what he's doing is a big part of the communication also. When we are performing, in addition to listening, we need to master the technique, remember our material, our steps, our chords, everything, maintain the attitude, connect with our feelings and emotions with the other musicians. And you also want to analyze and react to the cante at the same time. I think it's too much, right? That's why we really have to study the cante in detail in order to really know it and make the surprises become a game and a moment of joy and communication instead of panic attacks.
Each style has its own melody and its guides in specific places that we must know. Flamenco melodies are variable and flexible, yes, but we can still recognize them as we recognize happy birthday to you, even without the lyrics. Again, for this part of the study, forget about the lyrics. It's enough, right? And for example, if I do na na ni no ni no, it's enough. Even if I change the tempo and the compass. And if I do na na ni no na ti to ti to tram, I change the kaida, but you could identify it, right? I insist knowing the essence of the melodies of the cante, the melodies of the different styles is the key. This is what knowing the cante for real means. So just start with the most common styles that we always hear and then slowly grow your library. You'll see it will make your flamenco life so much easier. Sometimes the interpretation takes us by surprise because we are used to a specific letra sung in a specific way, maybe by a specific singer. This is why we need to listen to a lot of cante, a lot of different singers, different references, different sources, so that we can really understand what is the essence of the cante, what remains after all the variations and interpretations. This way you'll be able to identify many, many styles and you'll be ready to anticipate any possibility, any options that the singer chooses. Whatever you do in flamenco, learning and studying it means knowing and understanding the cante. And I'm here to help you. I hope it could help. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, tell me what you want me to talk about in these videos and go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses and my way of teaching flamenco. Remember, learn flamenco, make it different, make it fun, make it your own.